Dayon yun. Uy, mga pugong. Bisan pag si Odette. Amen. One of the things I forgot to introduce at the same time at the start of the Mass is today, by the way, being the first day of the calendar year is also called Day of Peace. So there are so many things that we can put into context, especially within the perspective of the motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Sa pagkatinood, ingon na namang yun ang pagkainahan, naatanan. No? It's practically a, a bundle of things. And mothers are always known to be carrying bundles of joy. Diba? So, this is what is so rich in today's celebration. First, let me put into perspective how we have started like two or three years ago. Okay, that January is declared being Bible month. Not just one week within the month of January. And that is very precisely appropriate because at the start of the new year, at the start of the new calendar year, we have to begin with the Word of God as our stepping stone so that we will be able to enrich the coming days and the coming months of this year in as much as we are also able to look back of what has happened or what have happened in the previous year. Uh, putting into context everything, good and bad, because these are learning experiences for us. Now, I'd like to ask for your apology, but I would like to mention a very important image, not biblical, not religious, but the image of a particular god, a deity, whose name is used for the first month of the year. And I am referring to Januarius. I don't know if you're familiar or you know something about Januarius. Januarius is a, has, has two heads. He's a god, of course, a god uh, with a small g. But the symbol of the two heads of Januarius is, one is looking back to the past and one is looking forward to the future. And this is precisely what is so significant from the religious point of view. Because every time we start or we begin the new year or the new calendar year, sama sa atong naandan, di ba? I don't know, ug naanam mo taas na ang inyong lista sa resolutions ninyo, yun, your resolutions. We always consider what had happened, what took place earlier or before, learn from them, whatever is bad, we have to change. That is the beginning of a new project to redo whatever is, whatever failed. And then to continue doing and uh, putting together, uh, harnessing ourselves in order to even improve on the good things that have happened. And this is one significant thing why in the first reading today, it is the blessing or the priestly blessing that is being read in the first reading coming from the book of Numbers. This is the blessing or the blessings, okay, there are three of this, given by the priests to the people so that their lives may not just be uh, bountiful because of their deeds, but it's precisely because of God's blessings, of God's providence. Ang pagtabang sa Dios kanila, ang pagtandog sa ilang kinabuhi, o labaw sa tanan, ang paggiya sa Dios kanila sa tibok adlaw sa ilang kinabuhi. And here I would like to put into context the motherhood of Mary, which is a very beautiful perspective for each and every one of us. What do you pili? Because it is through this motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary that we are also considered her children. We ourselves being the body of Christ. And if Mary is the mother of Christ, Christ is the head of the church and we his body, then we do have a right to call her our mother. But what is even so significant is this motherhood is so contagious. Regardless of 
male or female, children or old people, sorry for the word old, or grown-ups, we are challenged to become mothers as well. How do we become mothers? This is now in context with the biblical perspective of being mothers to the word of God in our lives. Just like Mary who kept everything in her heart. The motherhood of Mary, the very center of the celebration of January the 1st, is her reflection, is her, is her embracing of the word, of the events that happened in her life. And that is also, at the same time, our challenge. We become, sorry for a word, pregnant of the word, of the message in our lives. And then we accept it first, dynamically, through the hearing. That is why if there is no word being proclaimed, we will not be hearing about it. But we can also read the word. Now that's why these are very much connected, no? The Bible, the, the challenge to reflect. And after reading or hearing the word, we receive it, bring it to our hearts, and then it is through our hearts that we become pregnant of what the, challenge, of what the word of God challenges us. And then we give birth to the word through our actions. And this is now a very significant challenge especially in this our celebration not only today but for the rest of our lives because every day of our lives we are challenged to give birth to the word through our actions of goodwill of justice of peace of so many things and values that we have while at the same time trying to get away from what is undesirable so that whatever comes from out of this Productivity, uh, last night I used the word fecundity or fertility, we become bearers of the word. And as bearers of the word, we will be affecting or affecting peace to the whole world. And that is the reason why today is also called the day of prayer for peace. Because the word of God, prayer and reflection and peace they go together. We cannot fully embrace the word without observing reflective peace in our lives. Despite the many different challenges and the many different activities that we are in, we really have to spend time to be reflective and to be peaceful in our prayers. But this peace is not just passive because this peace becomes an active ingredient in the things that we do. Whenever we do good, it brings peace. Whenever we observe justice, it brings peace. Whenever we are considerate to other people, it brings in peace. That's why peace is not just a process, but also the fruit of what good things we do. And at the center of all this is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so as we continue with this Eucharistic celebration, and I mean to say continue, because we have just started the new year. And it's going to be a whole year reflection that goes on and on every year, every new year that comes. That's why one of the most beautiful and challenging questions we have to ask, where am I now? Or where are we now in our relationship with the Word of God? in our being mothers of the word and where have we been or where am i now in putting fruit in bringing out the fruit of the peace that we have received the peace that god can only give and the peace that we can only receive when we embrace the message of hope the word of god the word incarnate himself like the blessed virgin mary who by the way is also the Queen of Peace. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Amen.